This is Jersey's fruit. Forgot about tomatoes, it's beach plum. Beach plums are one of my favorite wild fruits. They have a sort of a tangy skin and a sweet inside. They make an amazing orange colored juice, little known fact. And they're also used in various types of syrups and preserves. Couple hundred feet tops in that direction. We've got the ocean, we've got the beach, and we've got the front of the dune system here, the primary dunes. See all the low plants on this lens of hot sand here, growing right near our beach plums? They have these little diminutive needle-like leaves because these are really harsh conditions here between the desiccating winds, the hot heat on the sand, the lack of moisture. Beach plum is existing in some really tough conditions. Beach plum is strong. There are few more elegant moments in the film than a man walking through deep sand in his Crocs. We're like tops 200 feet from the ocean, maybe a little less and the tide come in and out. But here, just a little bit back from the fore dune, we had beach plum already. This is a really challenging environment and you can see some of the growth of it is green and fresh and some of it has died back. Do you catch me <laughs> catching my hat? Like a cat. This is a big plant. I mean, you know, when we look at beach plum, we think, oh, this is like a tiny shrub, maybe a foot or two tall. But actually, a lot of beach plum's trunk is buried beneath the sand. We're really just seeing like the tippy tops of its branches. It's able to be buried over the years and kind of layer in and root in. It's like if you dug a big pit here for me and I just had like my elbows up to my hands sticking out. Just landward of the ocean and the beach are the primary dunes. At most beaches in New Jersey, that's all you would get because right behind that primary dune system is all development. Here at Island Beach, we have something really special, which is we have other dunes behind the primary dune system. We have interdune areas. We have seven miles of undeveloped barrier island. Dunes are created by wind action, sending sand from the beach further back into the dune system. But of course, winds also blow sand back out towards the ocean, except that they are held by plants in the dune system. This one is really important. This is a mafala, beach grass. This is one of very few plants that can colonize the fore dune here facing the ocean and withstand the salt spray and also the constant burial by sands. So, Growth is actually promoted in Amophila by burial and its root systems can go many, many feet deep into the dune beyond what you're seeing just the top growth over here. And when it's not buried by sand, it actually is more vulnerable to dying back from fungal diseases and other problems. So it is adapted for exactly these conditions. All of these elements that we're talking about, the primary dune, the beach, the ocean, the wind, they all exist in a sort of a feedback loop with one another. When you cut off one element of the dune system by say, developing all the back dunes, you lose the ability of the beach to replenish itself, the primary dune system to remain sustainable. And over time, you actually lose these dunes and you begin to lose the entire barrier island that is what protects the mainland from storms, this is the first place that storms coming in off the Atlantic will hit. And when the barrier islands are gone, it is the mainland itself that gets hit by the brunt. There's nothing like this. There's nothing as good as Island Beach all up and down the Atlantic. This is like the closest I can get to go into the desert Southwest and still be in New Jersey. I love habitats like this. This is a place where every plant is speaking to the harshness of the environment and every plant is thriving in these like almost impossible conditions and building this island simply by their existence.